Okay, so those of you interested in these uh, trolling flies that I'm making, and looking at this uh, at the thing on um, eBay, I just wanted to go through my whole setup here. Now, this is the trolling fly, part of the shad pack, basically a uh, basically a thread fin shad that already has the um, you see the description there. It already has the deflection disc on it to make give it a wiggle, uh, the eyes and everything like that. And uh, and the way my setup worms, I'm running this. Um, I know it sounds weird. I'm running a fly setup on some spin, on uh, bait casting gear, but you know I have fly rods in here as well. But I just don't have them set up at the moment. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this here onto the little bucket here. I'm going to spool this thing all the way out so you'll see exactly how my setup works. So uh, get little get a little thread fin shad there. And what that goes to is what we call a 2x tippet, or I'm sorry, a 3x or a 2x tippet. This is 3x tippet, actually, uh, right here. It's basically, uh, basically, it's 8 pound test uh, fluorocarbon. And here it's going to a loop to loop connection, but soon I'm going to start using uh, the Invisa swivels. But uh, that goes to 12 pound test leader. Now the the tippet is four feet long. The eight pound test line is four feet long, and the 12 12 pound test uh, leader is 16 feet long. So I'm running a long leader, 20 foot leader, and just let me uh, show you how to do this. Now we'll go over rods and reels and all that later. We'll just back this up. Now I come to my lead core line. Right, basically a loop to loop connection again. And you could put a swivel there if you want, but loop to loop connection. And all that 16 feet of loop to loop connection. Then I go to some six, uh, then I've got some uh, weight forward fly lines, number six. Just some cheap stuff that you can get from the Wally World or whatever. Once again, you got it spliced in here, sort of, and uh, there's my loop, and from my loop to the fly line. And then there's 90 feet of six weight fly line on here. So I'm not going to bore you to death with this, I'm just going to peel it all out and, 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 until we get to the back. Alright, so just right here at the backing, we have just basically a nail knot. Just a, I got 50 pounds, um, 50 yards of Dacron backing here and I usually let that out up to a, somewhere about the front eye there and usually when I'm trolling I'll just engage the clicker and just leave the reel disengaged right, that way when a fish takes it they start it starts screaming and I just start reeling but for right now just kinda letting you see how my setup works if we look all the way back up there to the house a little humble abode there. That's a long way up there. That's a that's 190 feet of fly line. All right, plus 16 feet of basically basically six, but basically 20 foot you know leader slash tippet and all that kind of thing. So you're talking 90, 100, 110 feet of line out. And this is long lining, flat lining, and if you get up there, you, see, you you can see the fly line. It floats, but you've added 16 feet of lead core line that gets it down in the water. And then the leader and the tippet are just invisible under the water to the fish, and so it's a very effective system. All right, I've I've caught some nice. Uh, the most success I've ever had in fishing of any kind has always been trolling, and fly trolling is my favorite because the the line, the way the line works, it tracks behind the boat a lot better than a lot of this other mono mono cuts across so badly. I just I hate it. But anyway, and this is 50 yards of uh, the Dacron there, and that's all I use. And this is a Berkeley Big Game rod. This is my dad's old fishing rod. My dad passed, and I, you know, kind of inherited it. And I just got it married to a Shakespeare Tidewater uh, TW20 reel. I like it. It's, it's good, you know, if we're going to be trolling below the dam or something like that. It's got some backbone to it, and it can take all the trolling. But it's basically a fly trolling system that's kind of been married to this, you know, uh, 
bait caster thing okay and you can do this however you want now what we'll do is go back up here to the house and I'll show you the fly rods that I use uh, uh, as well you know you can take this same system and just put it on a fly rod and it'll work just as well and uh, but so but so there you go long amount of line out and that's exactly what you want so we're gonna reel this back in won't bore you to death with that but that's the sort of a breakdown of the of the system so let's go back up and I'll talk about the rods the fly rods as opposed to just the uh, bait caster style rod right, so here we are and uh, this is you know these big trolling style reels you can fit all that line on there uh, just make sure you got something that's got a nice big capacity to it you're gonna have to have a hot rod that has a real seat that can accompany it. that's the and that's what you need there but that's the uh, bait caster style setup let's look at the fly rod setup now I've got two fly rods here. Uh, this is an old Phillips and fly rod. It's a six seven weight, which is great. This is how I first. This rod here is how I first stumbled into fly fishing, fly uh, trolling. I was using some uh, teeny uh, fly line, some of the one, the one with the sinking tip, and I was just casting, casting, casting. You know, just. And I got I got sick and tired of being out there on the river that they just cast in line, cast in line, boring, wearing my shoulder out, and I just got I just got sick of it out there in my little P row, my little boat. And what I decided to do was to just leave the line out in the water. And I was just kind of drifting along with the current. Bam, fish on. So Phillips and fly rod blank. Fiberglass, six, seven weight eight feet long and so and that's what I used uh, that's how I first got into this and then it was several years before I really began to think about um, using these sorts of techniques uh, and refining them and then I got back out in the river took up some took up fly tying and then I started building some of my own rods here and this is what I call a convertible rod this is a fiberglass um, eight foot long fiberglass five six weight e-glass blank and the reason I call it convertible is because if you notice, you know, it looks uh, sort of ragged and, uh, but uh, I got it wrapped with uh, um, cord here. I got it wrapped with cord here, but I got it with duct tape, just experimenting. That's why it looks so messed up. But uh, uh, you can actually put a fly rod on here, fly reel to troll on here, or you can put a bait caster on here. And the whole point of that is that uh, with the bait caster, the reel's on top, the fly reel, the, it's on the bottom. So with the bait caster on top, the guys go here, you got the bumper down to the bottom here, and it just, in that, so you can use it with bait casting. If you want to use a fly reel, just forego the bumper, put your regular old fly reel on there, you can, you know, and troll anyway. When I troll, I only, I really only like to troll with one rod, and I like to hold the rod under my arm and that's and it's very comfortable like that and so you'd the line be out of the boat that way and so that's far, far more comfortable to me and I catch a lot uh, you can sense a lot more things what's going on and everything and it's uh, and that's why I prefer the long handle here now uh, because when you're with the when you when you're with this kind of fly rod this is a traditional sort of fly rod with the, with the you know all the way down to the butt you just got to sit there and hold it with your hand. That can tire your hand out. And your old musician injuries like mine, your carpal tunnel and stuff like that. I just don't want to be sitting there holding it. I'd rather have it under my arm. And you can do the same thing with a fly reel like that. So that's a, another quick tip on how I do that. But you can use, the whole point of the fly trolling system is that you can use a variety of rods for it. The most important thing, I think, is the fly line, the backing, the fly line to the to the to coming off the loop to a to a leader and then down to a tippet almost exactly like you would on a fly rod you know it's got all the things the only difference is is that you can mount it on whatever system you want and you can tie on whatever fly you want and as as you saw this is the uh, shad pack uh, thread fin shad here olive and black are good color combinations for my waters um, and, and shad are just about everywhere but so that's a kind of a overview of the system that I use for trolling, uh, fly trolling, and uh, and using trolling flies. 
Okay, so here's a, another look at the uh, at the flies that, we're, that you're looking at here. For those of you who are on the eBay uh, page and looking at the shad pack specifically, now this is the crawfish thing, the Sipsy Craw, the ver is a imitation of the uh, uh, the red swamp crawfish that's prevalent in my waters, and I just uh, but what you're looking at, what you're looking considering, those of you who are on the uh, eBay page or the the shad pack, which is your thread fin shad pattern here. And then your no no gives your shad pattern here, kind of the bluish grayish color here, and then the in the thread fin shad pattern here, which is the the olive and sort of the black back on it. Now why why let's pick off a couple of these suckers and get them here on the snow. Oh, so why? What, what's the deal with the lip? You know, he, a lot of people look at that and they think, dude, what, what, what the heck is going on there? Again, that is a deflection disc. So we're talking about the rods, right? That's a deflection disc. Gives it a wiggle, and it adds weight to help you get the fly down. All my trolling flies are, are tandem. Uh, sometimes I, um, you know, sometimes the varying lengths there. But, uh, you know, it's a very simple fly. It's tied, uh, as you can see, you got a tandem hook. The first front hook is a two-alt. Um, the, the, the one that you'd be buying has a two-alt. Uh, both the hooks are Mustad uh, 3366. Now, this is a hook that I used kind of as a prototype. It's a little bit different because it has the offset. Some hooks that I had for years and years and never used them for anything. Decided to take them out. So this is a 2 alt 3366 Mustad hook here, a sprout hook, and then and a number 4 3366 hook here, 50-pound uh, test mono on both of them, and they're super glued in place, threaded in there, body is made from wool, just wool, no chenille, I, I, I've never been a chenille man, and the, and the, uh, the under wing here. And the overwing, boy, just to tell you what, that's why you have those stingers. They hook on everything. So just imagine what it does in the water. Uh, they, you know, the, the overwing there is, and the underwing is Congo hair. Got a little red in there to simulate gills and bleeding and things like that. Uh, and the whole, and it got eyes on there because you may not be able to hear that, but there's a little bit of a rattle in it. But it, you know, gives you that the the, the look of the of the fish, bait fish. The whole point of that deflection list disc to me, it looks like the open mouth of a feeding bait fish. That's what it looks like to me. And it and it gives it a wiggle, swiggle. You know, it just kind of wiggles in the water, very subtle wiggle. Not and uh, and I find that that catches fish. It just catches fish. And uh, same thing here. Uh, you know, crystal flash is the main flash on this fly. It's the only flash on this fly in particular. Uh, same thing, these are made from uh, polymer clay. You know, I take them, I bake them, I put them in myself. Uh, not every one of them are perfectly centered. That gives it a little bit of an odd, more erratic movement, you know. So it, 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 each one's going to have its own little distinct movement to it. And, um, and, and although. Uh, the crawfish is the same way. It, this just simulates the fan tail of a crawfish. Uh, and uh, the guess what? The hook actually represents some of the tentacles and stuff that come off of it. And the, and the main thing we're exaggerating here is the pinchers. But that, but that's the whole point is that that adds action to the fly. I mean, because when you're trolling, whether it be you're rowing, paddling, or using a, an electric trolling motor, just pulling lures through the water with no action, you ain't going to catch nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you. The only way you're going to catch something is if you impart action to the fly. Now, when you're fly casting, it's the way you retrieve. You know, you, you do short strips. Sometimes you do long strips. Sometimes you do long, long, short, or short, long, long, whatever. And you vary the retrieve. Well, when you're trolling, trolling is essentially the equivalent of a perpetual retrieve your your hook is just permanently in the water you don't waste time casting you know casting doesn't really catch fish what catches fish is putting the bait in front of their face and nothing get, keeps the bait in the water as long as 
trolling does, and that's why I take up trolling. And the way you vary your, one of the ways that you quote unquote vary your retrieve is to one, put some sort of contraption onto the fly that will impart action to the fly. This is why bass fishermen have spinner baits and crank baits and you know they have all kinds of crank baits deep diving crank baits shallow running crank baits lipless crank baits and they're all designed to give specific types of action well it's it's high time that fly fishermen do the same thing and that's what this is all about and so uh, that, and that, and that's why I'm doing it so if you're interested in in buying these uh, they're on the eBay page and I know most of you are watching this video have already seen the eBay page, but you can go to the eBay page, you can purchase them there, and uh, try these out, and let me know what you think about them. You know, once you get them out there on the water, and you use them, and you catch fish, send me photos, those kinds of things. So seriously, if you've really been wanting to, to get into fly trolling, not quite sure how, try these flies out, and then uh, shoot me a message when you go out there and catch some fish, because these things do catch fish. And uh, most of the ties, basically all the flies that I tie are designed to actually mimic the bait fish that are bait fish and the things that they're fishing and feeding on. Um, and so and so there you have it. And uh, that's me. I'm Damon. And uh, I will talk to you guys later.